May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our heart be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Salt and light, sweetness and darkness. These are amazing images we hear about every day in our lives. On cooking shows, chefs speak about the importance of a meal having a balance of saltiness and sweetness, or savory and sweet. Your main course will perhaps be a bit savory flavored, lightly with salt to enhance its taste, while your meal is concluded with something sweet like a dessert. In the world, we often define things as light or darkness. Catastrophes and troubled times are defined as darkness in the world. Joy, hope, and happiness are described as light in the world. Darkness can be a negative experience where light can be a positive experience. And darkness hides, often while light reveals. God hopes we have faith enough to shine light into the darkness and thus expose what is there. Jesus calls us to be the light of the world. The only thing that can overcome darkness is the light. And when light shines on our concerns and brokenness, it is a starting point on a journey towards repentance, healing, and forgiveness. Salt and light are how Jesus describes the people in this portion of his Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We cannot be hidden while we are people of the light. We are seen as God's people, broken yet loved by God who reconciles us to wholeness. We add flavor and intensity to life and faith when we are salty for God. And with these two metaphors, Jesus tells us who we are and what we are to do. Right after, he tells us that we are blessed. The other day I drove past a sign that said, if you can't find the light, be the light. I think we can agree that there is too much darkness in our world. The first anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine is coming up later this month an invasion based on Russian misinformation to disguise the predatory behavior of its leader. The cold weather we had before Christmas led to several deaths in the U.S. as many people, both there and here, were without heat in their homes for several days. We are still dealing with COVID infections after three years of this pandemic. COVID's impact on our economy has caused inflation to rise, which in turn has led to interest rates rising to counteract that inflation. This has led to economic stress and challenges for many people. We are also living through a climate emergency as we see climate change affect weather patterns, making weather more intense. Many of our citizens, both young and old, are dealing with mental stress and anxiety as well as we find a way through all of this darkness. And as a people of faith, we find a way to endure and persevere through it by leaning on God. Jesus lights up our souls. And as we look for ways that the light we possess, the light that we are, can transform the darkness into something better and life-giving, transform it from something that drains us and holds us in our brokenness to something that brings us hope. During my recent time off last week, I read a book entitled Bittersweet. It reflects on these very same concepts that Jesus speaks about in this passage. The author, Susan Cain, refers to Jewish mysticism's view of it, which isn't too far off from early Christian mysticism's viewpoint on light and darkness. Jesus, as we know, was also a Jewish teacher and would have been aware of these metaphors in his own religious tradition, even though he wasn't necessarily a mystic. We do know he is a Jewish reformer, introducing a new relationship with God to humanity. And we also know that there are many references to light and dark throughout Holy Scripture. And I offered this paraphrase of Susan Cain's words from her book. In the beginning, all of creation was a vessel filled with divine light. It broke apart and all the shards of holiness were strewn all around us. Sometimes it's too dark to see them. Sometimes we're too distracted by pain or conflict. But our task is simple, to bend down, dig them out, pick them up, and in so doing, to perceive that light can emerge from darkness. Death gives way to rebirth. The soul descends to this riven world for the sake of learning how to ascend. And to realize that we all notice different shards. One person may see a lump of coal, but someone else may spot the gold glimmering beneath. 
It's a very hopeful sentiment and image that she shares. Even when everything seems like darkness, we can still find the light. The light is still out there somewhere. And sometimes we just need to look harder to find it. But we need to believe it is there to be found, and we do not ever waste our time when we seek it. In our Christian context, we understand that Jesus is the light of the world. He is the one we seek. He is the one who calls us into his light, and through us, his light shines in the world. Therefore, he calls us the light of the world. And in the light, we glorify God. We are cracked open, so our light shines and illuminates everything. And when we can't find the light, we are called to remember that we are the light. It is within us somewhere because Jesus has put it there. He illuminates our lives. He is the restorer, the healer, the reconciler, the forgiver, the redeemer, all the things that bring light into our lives and the lives of all people. This passage is a call to discipleship by means of Jesus describing us as salt and light. We are called to boldness in putting our faith into action. Salt and light are our identity. Saltless salt and hidden light are of no use to God. These basics of life are describing the life of discipleship. And Jesus is telling us what we do for the world when we are salt and light. Jesus gives his disciples a distinctive capacity to elicit goodness on the earth. We have the capacity to elicit goodness as we participate in ways that we find in the Beatitudes, which comprise last Sunday's gospel and immediately precedes this passage that we've heard today. Last week, we heard that Jesus invites us to value the dispossessed, care for those who suffer loss, seek to do justice, show mercy, have integrity, be peacekeepers and make peacemakers, and courageously stand for what we believe in as we join with God in building God's kingdom. If we don't engage in these practices that humanize life on earth and bring divinity to this earth, we will become like salt that has lost its taste and light that has dimmed. Our fundamental being and identity will be diminished. When we are the light of the world, we are being called to be the gathered community that refracts God's light so that all nations and peoples can know God's justice and mercy. Light enables us to see things and is a kind of energy that gives things color, helps things grow, provides power. We become more fully the light Jesus has made us to be when we engage others in the world, enabling diversity, nurturing a healthy earth, generating policies for eco-justice, engaging with other justice initiatives in our society, restoring or repairing relationships, praying for each other, forgiving and being forgiven, extending a helping hand to those in need, loving our neighbors as ourselves, and most of all, loving God and God's Son, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed everything for us on the cross and gave his life so the whole world can be reconciled to God. When Jesus died, his disciples believed the light had gone out forever. However, on the third day, he rose again. His victory over death meant that the light had overcome the darkness of humanity that led to his public persecution, arrest, and execution. Jesus' resurrection showed us that the light will shine again. Now it shines in us, just as he said, we are the light of the world. Now let us shine so bright that everyone will see our good works and hear our good words of God's good news. Amen.